Hello everyone. My name is Brian Peasland. I am the author of Oracle Rack Performance Tuning on Rampant Tech Press. I am very excited to be here today to record this video for skill builders. Today I am going to talk about Oracle Rack Cache Fusion and its global cache transfers and I'll even provide a little demo for you. After viewing this video you should have a better understanding of how Cache Fusion works, the differences between current and consistent read transfers, the difference between two-way versus three-way transfers, and the weight events associated with global cache transfers. I do assume that you have a basic understanding of Oracle's architecture, including the concept of an Oracle instance, the buffer cache, how data gets moved into the buffer cache, and weight events. So let me give you a little history. Back in 1988, Oracle version 6 was released, and this version included the very first commercially available clustered database system. Back then, it was known as Oracle Parallel Server, or OPS. Oracle Parallel Server did provide good scalability, but it did have its issues as well. Primarily, the biggest issue with OPS was a concept known as disk pinging. To understand disk pinging, I thought I could bring in a little, little picture here showing a two-node Oracle Parallel Server cluster. I have two users, Jack and Jill. Jack is connected to one node of the cluster, and Jill is connected to another node of the cluster. Even in the beginning, even in Oracle version 6, its clustered database was a shared disk architecture. And you can see both nodes of the cluster can access the same shared disk. Between the nodes is a private network. But when OPS was first released, the private network didn't do too much. It was primarily for things like heartbeats between the nodes. Just checking the status, are you alive? Yes, I'm alive. Good, we're all together. If Jack read some data from disk and Jill needed that same data, and that data was not in the buffer cache of Jill's instance, that block needed to be read from disk as well. This meant two users accessing the same block could incur two reads from disk if they just happened to have the unfortunate circumstances of being on separate instances, separate nodes of the cluster. Things became more difficult when Jack modified a block of data. Jack updated a row in a table and later on Jill tried to read the committed row. Before that could happen, Jack's changes must be written to disk and then Jill's session could read the data block from disk into the buffer cache of her instance. This was disk pinging. Writes and subsequent reads could result in disk I.O. activity. In 1999, Oracle released version 8i of their database product. And the 8i release was very historic from the purposes of today's discussion because it introduced a concept called Cache Fusion. And Oracle Marketing decided enough with the Oracle Parallel Server name since Cache Fusion is really a big important thing, let's change the name to Real Application Clusters. And that's what it's known as today, is Oracle Rack. So in Oracle Rack, the private network between the nodes in the cluster can now transfer data blocks. This has resolved the disk pinging issue we saw in Oracle Parallel Server. So Jack needs to read a row of data from a table. That block is read from the shared storage into the buffer cache. Later on, Jill wants to access that same row of data. Instead of reading the data from disk, Jill's session will request that block be transferred across the private network. 
also known as the cluster interconnect. And we'll see examples of this as we go forward. So that, in a nutshell, is cache fusion. Oracle Rack cache fusion is simply where Oracle Rack transfers data blocks from the buffer cache of one instance to the buffer cache of another instance across the cluster interconnect. Transfers across this private network are an order of magnitude better than disk I.O. activity and they help Oracle Rack performance.